this time, Mr. DeFonte, if you would do the honors. Steve? Ah, very good. Mike Slater is a new morning uh, show host on KFMB. He started his radio career while a student at Yale on Yale Radio. Mike Don't is hold a, that against me. Hey, just a voice crying in the wilderness. Mike is a regular contributor on the Fox News channel and is dedicated to supporting our military. Along with his Slater Crusaders, he will be speaking on the matter of the federal debt ceiling. I'm Mike, and I'm a conservative, and I'm here because America is the greatest country in the world. This room is filled with so many hate mongers. Just violence seeping through. It's just a horrible... Listen, I love this. This is what this country is all about. This is what the Tea Party is all about. And I have to tell you, your reputation at Tri-City Tea Party precedes yourself. Um, when I asked about a lot of people about all the different groups in California, Tri-City was known as the group that gets it done. Boots on the ground. I think you're inspired by Camp Pendleton just north of y'all. And uh, I want to thank you all for that very much. We're here because of our grandkids. We're here because of our kids. We're here because we love our country. Again, my name is Mike Slater. host the morning show, 760 KFMB, from 6 to 9. Also have a show on a Sirius XM satellite radio uh, on Sundays at 6 to 8 um, in the morning. But... Uh, I don't like talking about myself too much, uh, which is good because I was asked to talk about a, a very specific thing here. But I do want to tell you this. I moved here. I'm still new here. I moved. This is our 11th week in San Diego, so still kind of new. And when I found, uh, I was looking at where to live, right? And I'm getting advice from people. Should I live downtown? Should I live by the beach? So I really always want to live downtown. And people are like, no, it's loud. It's hard to get. And I'm like, they should, like, you should live by the beach. I'm like, no, I'm going to live downtown. So I ended up buying a condo, on a penthouse condo at the Electra. Are you familiar with this? Oh, yeah. Beautiful place. It's two, like, all, windows down one side, windows down the other. So I get harbor view on one side, and then I get city view on the other. Beautiful. Uh, can't really afford it, but it's a splurge. It's a splurge, right? So I lived there for a few weeks, and I'm like, well, this is fantastic, but um, people were right. I shouldn't have lived downtown. It was way too crowded. So I bought a house in La Jolla. Uh, a couple weeks into this. So I have a house in La Jolla and a condo downtown, which is great. Um, and I've been decorating um, my apartment. Well, I have a car. I have a Jeep. But that's, I mean, that's just one thing. Um, I thought it'd be nice if I had a new car. So I bought a Porsche uh, to ride back and forth tonight. I got two. I got two. One for the winter, one for the summer. One's black, one's red. Just so you know, whatever's in my mood. You know what I mean? So I uh, can't afford it uh, at all. Uh, but I was decorating, so I bought a TV, and I was such a, a, a dope, I bought a 55 inch, and I didn't realize they make 80 inch TVs now. So I went back and I bought an 80 inch, I got two so I could watch March Madness, I could watch the Aztecs and the Syracuse Oarsmen play at the same time, with, and then I brought them both home, and I'm like, wait a second, they sell 3D TVs now? So I went back and I bought two more TVs, so uh, I'm really excited about it. Uh, can't afford any of it. Uh, but it's all right, I just got uh, more credit cards. No big deal, right? Just got a few more credit cards here and there, it's fine. I, I set a debt limit for myself a few years ago out of college, and I said, Mike, um, self, uh, don't ever go more than $100,000 in debt. Don't ever, so. I did, I did. Um, but that's okay, I raised the debt ceiling for myself. So I made it to a 500,000, it's a problem solved. <laughs> Ah, uh, I passed that. Um, so now it's at a million. So I set a million debt ceiling. Problem totally under control until I, uh, I passed it the other day. So I set it to a billion. So I have a debt ceiling of a billion dollars. Now you might be saying, Slater, you're out of control. You're debt. You're buying cars and you're talking the radio. You can't be making that much money. And, uh, and I, I say, yes, that's true. But again, all these credit cards, it's just fine. But I am very serious about my finances now. I see the light. Uh, so I've decided that in fiscal year 2014, I'm going to cut HBO from my cable package. <laughs> now, not, you may be saying, Slater, why don't you cut it now? <laughs> why the heck am I going to cut it now? Cut it down the road when I don't have to worry about it. No one would 
would say this is a sound fiscal policy for a person. But this is exactly what's going on with the debt ceiling. It's total madness. And the liberals, who, when Bush was in office, rightfully so, stood up and said, uh, you can't be raising the debt ceiling. That's out of control. You can't be doing this anymore. And the same liberals who back then were saying, George Bush, you have a $200 billion deficit for the year, but now not a peep when Barack Obama has a $200 billion deficit for the month of February. <laughs> what is going on here? Lowering it, they're saying we need to raise it. We need to raise it. Why do we need to raise it? We need to raise it because we can't fund the government if we don't raise it. We're unable to fulfill our obligations. And anyone with two brain cells in their head would say, stop having so many obligations. <laughs> right? So I'm going to go to, uh, what's your name, Bob? Bob, listen, I'm, I have uh, a lot of obligations in my life. I just heard I have a lot of car payments going up, gas payments going up, I got a condo, house in La Jolla. None of that's true, by the way. Yeah. But for the sake of the story, just go with it. Try to okay. make a point. Uh, and Bob, I need to borrow $100,000 from you. Uh, I just have a lot of obligations. So, so can I have $100,000? Absolutely not. But I have obligations. Got the spending. Fewer obligations? What a crazy concept that would be. That's exactly what we need to do in the federal government. Listen, the Tea Party movement across the country, Tri-City's no different. It's all about getting back to our fundamental founding principles, and that is the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Am I right? I agree with Abraham Lincoln that I've never had a thought on policy that did not spring forth from the principles of the Declaration of Independence. And that is life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Our federal government is there to protect our God-given rights, not violate them. And that's what they're doing. Anytime they tax us to fund anything beyond their constitutional mandate, anything beyond what's in Article 1, Section 8, is violating our right to property and our right to our life. It takes hours out of your day. Y'all just coming home from work? You worked for hours today to make money. That's your life. And the government taking that away from you taking away your property, taking away your life. And they need to just cut back their obligation. I guarantee you, if they do that, if for a year we went back to our constitutional principles, we'd be talking about lowering the debt ceiling, not raising it. This whole conversation is totally, totally backwards. So I was on um, Fox News uh, a couple weeks ago, and that was a dream come true, being on Fox News. And we've been do able to do it for a while. It's just been, uh, it's been wonderful. And we, anyone listen to Fox News? Watch Fox News here? Okay. Yeah. How about MSNBC? Yeah. That's all sets another cable channel. See, there weren't a lot of booze. I don't know if you've even heard of them before. No one, no one watches them. Um, so it was on, it was on uh, Fox and Friends. And I didn't find out until a few hours later, but one of my career dreams came true. I was so excited. One of my dreams. I was quoted on Media Matters as an example of right-wing vitriolic hate speech. Isn't that wonderful? And I, I was thrilled. It was the greatest day of my life. I called my mom, who's a, who thinks Barack Obama hung the moon, by the way. And I said, Mom, I was on Media Matters because they hate me. Isn't that great? She's like, no, not really, honey. I don't. I don't think that's a good thing. This is why they hated me. I'm not checking my voicemail now. I wrote down the quote here. Um, I quoted Thomas Jefferson. I know. I know. Keep that in the room, okay? I don't want anyone at Homeland Security to find out about that. He wrote a letter to uh, Samuel Kirchville in 1816. And he said, if I may quote in length because it's brilliant, to preserve the independence of the people, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. There's people back here. Let me talk to y'all back here. We must make our election between economy and liberty or profusion and servitude. Profusion would be today like wasteful spending. So it's between liberty and servitude. And you're saying, whoa, and that's what Media Matters took way out of hand. Okay, that's what they took way out of hand. Like, whoa, what's that hate monger talking about? He's ridiculous. This is what I mean by this. This is what Thomas Jefferson meant by. It's the same thing today. If we run into such debts as that we must be taxed in our meat and our drink, in our necessities and our comforts, 
in our labors and our amusements, for our callings and our creeds, as the people of England are, our people, like them, must come to labor 16 hours in the 24, give the earnings of 15 of those to the government for their debts and daily expenses, and the 16th being insufficient to afford us bread, we must live as they do now on oatmeals and potatoes and have no time to think, no time and no means of calling the mismanagers to account, but be glad to obtain sustenance by hiring ourselves to rivet their chains on the necks of our fellow sufferers. Wow. 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 Yeah. Thomas <laughs> How much debt was he talking about? <laughs> $25. Isn't that amazing? That's, that's the amount of passion that we need to have for this issue. It's not a minor inconvenience that we're 14, I don't know, $14 trillion in debt, whatever. That's not a minor inconvenience. This is the difference between liberty and servitude to our national government. That's what this is all about. And the worst part about it is, when I'm in debt because I bought a house in La Jolla and, uh, and my condo, I'm in debt because I'm spending my money and the bank's money and the credit card's money. That's one thing. But when the federal government is spending, is it debt? They're spending your money and they're spending your kids' money and they're spending your grandkids' money. And not only are we content with putting the chains around the necks of our fellow sufferers, we're putting the chains around the necks of our grandkids and kids. While we're all working hard to make sure that you can hand over maybe an inheritance to your children, what we're doing now is handing over a bill. And that's immoral. Those are the things we talk about on the Mike Slater Show. It's not about, I like that sign, it's not about uh, the economics. And we can talk about the economics of this because it's really fascinating. It's not about that. It's about the principles of it. And it doesn't matter who's doing it. It's immoral no matter who's doing it. So I was asked what we can, what we can do about this. You wanted me to talk about that. Again, Tri-City Tea Party, you guys are boots on the ground, such a blessing, and I can't thank you enough for your time and your passion for this nation. It's unbelievable. Two things. One, get the phones ringing. <laughs> Call our congressmen. Let them know we're paying attention. That's so important, because they, they don't get a lot of calls. They don't know. They don't think you know. That's the bottom line. Let them care. They don't think you know. So let them know that you know, and let them know that you care. That's one. Two, this is my challenge as we leave here. Your friends, family, coworkers, sometime in the next 10 days, talk to three people about the national debt. 10 days. You don't have to do it tomorrow. You don't want to force it. That's the thing. You don't want to force the conversation. Just uh, when it comes up, you're out to dinner with some friends, and you're like, whoa, this bill's a lot. And they say, yeah, it is a lot. You say, you know what? We're so far in debt. You know the national debt is $80,000 per household? It's crazy. If this thing keeps going any higher, then it's going to cause inflation. We're going to have to start printing money, and then the money that we have is going to be worth less. And then this bill, instead of $20, it's going to be like $30, $40. You know? So we really you know, should get the national debt down a little bit. Got to start having these conversations, getting people a little more engaged. What people like Maureen was it, I think, who who's now, wasn't, was a regular voter and is now passionate and fired up, right? Claudia? Claudia, we need more, we need more Claudias. And that can only happen by starting conversations very casually. So can we make the promise? We'll give it the best shot we got. Three people in the next 10 days, what's that, until next Friday, talk to them about the national debt. Just let them know what's going on. That's the most we can ask for. Thank you all so much for having me out here. I appreciate it.